Okay, so we need to be aware of our sins and overcome it. And because God hates sin, okay, promise those who pursue holiness will become vessels for honor. So God give us promises to motivate us. That uh, God, God motivate us with His promises, not just by telling us what to do, but He give us promises that when we obey Him, He will bless us. In Tim, 2 Timothy 2.20, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and hay, clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for master, prepared for every good work. So if a person cleanses himself from the latter, from all sins, and he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, that he is sanctified and he is useful and he is prepared for all good works. So, um, so we understand that when we live in holiness, then God is pleased with us and then God will bless our life and God will use us greatly. So it's beneficial for us to live in holiness. And another promise, those who obey God will be great in God's kingdom. Matthew 5, 19, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so whoever breaks one of these commandments and teach people to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, and also if a person continues sin and he has no Christian life, he doesn't show any, have any fruit, then he could lose salvation altogether. There are some so-called Christians, they continue to sin, they continue to steal money, or they uh, have adultery, continue to live in lust, and uh, continue to hurt other people, or fight in the church. They could, you know, that they might have problem in the spiritual life. And then they, the faith is not saving faith. And in that situation, if the person doesn't have living faith at all, he might not be saved. If he doesn't have living faith at all, then he's not saved. And uh, he can lose salvation. But then, uh, you know, so those who disobey the commandment, if they continue to do that and they, they don't obey God at all, they might not have eternal life. Now we're not saved by doing good. We're saved by trusting in God as our Savior. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I trust in your salvation, then he is forgiven. And when he is forgiven, when he, when he has salvation, then the presence of God inside him, the Holy Spirit will cause him to bear fruit, to love God, to obey God. And if he doesn't have that change at all, then there might be something wrong with his Christian life. And whoever does and teaches them, so uh, follow the commandments and teach people to come, to obey, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So he will be called great. He is great in the kingdom of heaven and God treasures him and wants to do great things in his life. And warning, now we are mostly motivated by grace, but we can have warning. The warning will remind us that sins are terrible. Now for Christian life, we should be mainly motivated by God's grace. God's promises. We should be motivated mainly by God's grace and promises. But still we have sins and sins can hurt us and we should be warned if we continue to sin, we can lose salvation. And, uh, and also the worst thing can happen to us when we continue to sin. So there is warning about sin. Acts 5.3 But Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? You have not lied to men but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. 
So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. So God can struck a person who sinned, He can struck him immediately. He can kill him immediately. According to His law, He can do that. Uh, although God doesn't do that all the time, it doesn't mean that we can continue to sin, but we know that sin causes God to be unhappy and, and angry. So we understand that there is a warning that God can strike those who sin without repentance. And then sins are destructive. This is another warning. John 5, 14. So I hope you remember this verse. See you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So if you continue sin, something worse will happen to you. So don't sin. Stop sinning. And then warning, sowing to the flesh will reap destruction. Galatians 6, 8 For he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction, but he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. So if a person sows to the flesh, will of the flesh reap destruction. So if a person follow his sinful nature, he will face destruction in his life. And then he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life. So this is a contrast. If a person doesn't sow to the Holy Spirit, he doesn't obey the Holy Spirit, he obeys his sinful nature, he can enter hell and it's terrible. Now first he would, you know, the relationship with, with God will be broken more and more. And then if at a certain point he totally loses faith in God, he loses contact, the connection with God, that he continues to sin and did not respond to the Holy Spirit, he can lose faith. When he loses faith, then he can end up in hell. And hell is terrible because there is no way out. So if anyone lives in sin, we need to warn them. At the same time, we tell them God loves you very much. God wants you to turn back to Him. And when you turn back to Him, God is very, very, God is very, very happy with you when you re repent and turn back to God. And another warning, the carnal mind is an enemy of God. Romans 8, 7, Because the car carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So the carnal mind, the mind that is worldly, that doesn't follow God, is enmity against God, is, is hatred against God, is fighting against God. And it's not, uh, subject, it, it, it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It cannot be subject to the law of God. So it, you know, it's against God. Another warning, breaking one law breaks the whole law. James 2.10 For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Now why is that so? Because when a person like he has anger in his heart, his anger will affect his relationship with God, affect his spiritual life, and affect his relationship with people. So one sin can affect his relationship with God, with himself, and with people. And then, or if people have lust, it will cause him, you know, that his spiritual life will go down and his uh, relationship with God and with other people would go down. So any kind of sin, if a person has committed adultery and, or have lust, then it will affect his relationship with God and with people and also ruin his spiritual life. So, so any kind of sin can affect our spiritual life, affect our relationship with God and with people. So any, any one breaking one law or committing one sin can destroy a person. Like if a pastor, he sins against his church members, his, against his, his church or his wife, he can ruin his whole life and ruin his own ministry. So it's something we need to be aware. It's not until a person commit, commit all sins, then 
then he uh, will face a consequence. When he commits one sin, he can face uh, many consequences, ruin to his whole life. And then warning, do not give devil, the devil a foothold. Ephesians 4.26 In your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. So that context talk about do not sin. And so do not sin and then talk about do not give the devil a foothold. When the devil, when we give the, the devil a foothold, he will enter our life. And when he comes, he will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So we understand that any sin can give the devil a foothold. And in many churches, people have, you know, uh, gossip or they fight against each other. They have depression or they have a frustration with people or they have lust or adultery or theft any of this can give the devil a foothold and the devil can come in to attack the church and we are called to pursue perfection first timothy 6 14 to keep this commandment this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our lord jesus christ now, as humans, we can never be perfect, but we can try our best to be perfect with the help from God that we can, whenever we have sins, we are sorry for our sins, and then we ask God to help us. And we know that this uh, sins, any sin is destructive. Any one sin can be destructive to the whole life. So we know that, okay, the sins are destructive, therefore I'm sorry for my sins, and I ask God to help me, and I trust in a relationship with God and I continue to have a good relationship with God and then I have the strength to overcome my sins and the more we repent and overcome the sins the more perfect we become now we can never be totally perfect but we pursue holiness as much as we can and then we understand that any sin is destructive so we don't say well it's okay to commit some sins but we say it's not okay to commit any one sin any one sin is destructive so we want to stop any kind of sin and we we uh, uh, that we repent of any one sin because we know it's destructive that's very important because many people commit continue to commit sin because they think it's not destructive they think they can run away from God they can avoid the punishment of God they can avoid the eyes of God they think that but it it really doesn't work that way that all sins are destructive. Okay, so how to overcome sins? So first, God's nature to help us overcome sins. God is holy. He cannot stand any sin. His nature, He is full of, He is totally holy. He is light. In Him there is no darkness. And God is love. That motivates Him to prepare salvation for us and help us to overcome sins. So God, it, he, he has love for us. He wants to help us to overcome our sins. And He's powerful and wise, so He can give us power and wisdom to overcome sin. So He is powerful and He is wise and He can help us. And He owns everything. He can bless us greatly when we pursue holiness. So when we pursue holiness, then God is very happy with us and then He will bless us. So when we repent and obey Him, He is very, very happy. God is very happy and God will bless our lives. So, uh, so we say, Lord, Lord, please help us to repent of our sin and turn away from our sins and hate sins and then pursue holiness and you are very happy with us. And then you will bless us. So we continue to trust in God. And God's grace, now first is God's nature, that is His nature, His inner quality. And then God's grace is what He does for us. So when in the grace God's uh, grace statement, it would have us there, us, we there. So God's grace for us, what He does for us, God's grace is what He does for us to bless us. God prepares salvation to deliver us from sins and forgive us whenever we repent. So God forgive us and give us a salvation. He gives us new spiritual life that naturally rejects sin. When we have the presence of God, we naturally reject sin. After we are saved, we have a, t a motivation to reject sin. But some Christians, sometimes they, they see other Christians sin, so they say it's okay to sin. And they don't think of the serious warning in the Bible. So we need to understand the warning in the Bible. 
The Holy Spirit prompts us to repent when we have sins. He does not give up on us even when we sin. So when we sin, God continues to work in our heart. He does not give up on us. He continues to move us to obey Him. That is the grace of God. He doesn't give up on us. And the Holy Spirit gives us, give us motivation and wisdom to overcome our sins. He will help us to overcome our sins. So this is how we describe God's grace. So it can be used in a sermon too. That how God changes our heart and give us wisdom so we a uh, motivation to overcome a sin and then whenever we overcome a sin God is very help happy and God will bless us. So this is God's grace to motivate people to overcome their sins. And then continue here uh, God's grace to help us uh, to overcome sins. The Holy Spirit gives us joy when we overcome sins. That gives us motivation. So whenever we overcome sins, uh, when we overcome our anger or frustration or lust, God is very happy. And God puts good Christians around us to be good examples for us to follow. So that is another grace of God, that He will put good Christians around us to teach us, to motivate us, to be good examples to us. And then, number seven, God will bless us and help us to enter His perfect plan when we pursue holiness. So when we pursue holiness, we enter the perfect plan of God. Then our life will go higher and higher. God's perfect plan is the best for us. When we obey Him, the best will happen to us. And when we sincerely repent of our sins, God will definitely forgive us. So we can be assured that. When we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then God will forgive a repentant uh, heart. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. That God will not despise a person who is broken because of his sins and is contrite in his heart that he's really sorry Look at his face. He's really sorry for his sins. And God will not despise that when we are really sorry for our sins. So we say, we say, Lord, we are really sorry for our sins. We feel bad about our sins. Please forgive us. Please help us to have strength. And we can be more than conquerors. Romans 8.37 In all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Because God loved us, we can be more than conquerors. And the five steps to victory, be aware of any sin or anything that affects our lives. And believe that any sin or negative things are destructive. Three, apply biblical principles to the problems. So what does the Bible tell us to do? Now, this five step to victory can help us overcome negative thinking, negative emotions and sins and any negative relationship, any problems in our life. So first we become aware of the problem of the sin and then believe that is destructive and apply biblical principle what does the Bible tell us to do and four pray to have forgiveness and strength that God will forgive us and give us strength and choose to obey God so when we have anger we say if he has done something wrong and I'm angry with him then I then I, I w I'm sinning and the sin will cause uh, me to you know to lose the blessings of God so I choose not to be angry because when I'm angry, I'm losing something. God is not happy with me. So when He has committed some sins against me, that is His problem. That is His problem. I don't have to take His garbage. We don't have to eat His garbage. When He has done something wrong to me, it is His problem. I don't have to keep thinking about the problem. I can say I understand that He has been hurt by people, therefore He will hurt people easily. So we understand that and we accept that, that He is being controlled by sins. And we accept that and then we are not overcome by that. And then we say, forget about it. I don't have to be angry with Him. That we say, God will bless me. God will give back to me all the good blessings so I don't have to worry about Him. So I don't have to worry about uh, the, any, any bad things people do to us. So that's how we can have strength. Okay, so, um, and then uh, if we have depression, we'll say, when we're depressed, when we're unhappy, then we'll lose strength. 
then we have no joy and no strength and life becomes miserable. So when things are not going smoothly, it doesn't mean we have to be unhappy. God has a way. Now some people say, that's only a belief. But when we count the blessings of God, when we count how many times God has blessed us, we'll say God has blessed us in the past, for sure He'll bless us in the future. So God for sure will help me. So therefore, in the difficult times, I just keep trusting in God and God will help me. So I don't have to feel bad. I don't have to be depressed for whatever reason. When someone hurts me, I don't have to be depressed. That is His problem when He hurts me. I, I can rejoice in the Lord. I can count the good blessings of God. And then when we have lust, we know that lust is going to destroy my life. So I will stop the lust right away. I choose not to look at a sexy woman. I not to think about her. I choose to think about God. Think about His goodness. Think about holiness. And think about God will reward me. So I choose to be, to be uh, following God and obeying God. So that's how we can overcome our sins. Okay, And sins can destroy many things. Can destroy our relationship with God. Uh, it can destroy our relationship with other people. You know, when we yell at people, it will hurt the relationship. And it will hurt our ma marriage. If we are unfaithful to the, to the spouse, it can hurt the marriage. When we yell at the spouse, it can hurt the marriage. It will hurt our job, our ministry, and our reputation. And our future and our whole life will be hurt also. That we won't have a good future when we continue to sin. And God's plan for our life, that we lose God's plan, and also our eternal life. And then sometimes there is no turning back when we sin. Now, uh, when we sin, we can still repent, but sometimes there is no turning back. What I mean is like this. If a person, you know, he commits serious sin, he's put into jail. Then he has to stay in a jail for a number of years, and there's no turning back now. Now, after he enters the jail, he can repent, he can try to do his best. And after he comes out from the jail, he can try to restore his reputation and try to live his life according to, uh, in, in God's way again. He can do that, but it's, it, it's more difficult. And then if a person is already old and he has lost, he has lost his opportunities to serve God anymore, then it's no turning back. For instance, if a person is old already and he committed sin in his ministry, then he cannot serve God anymore. There's no more time, no more opportunity. So we must understand that, that uh, it's not true that there's always a chance to get back what we have lost. Sometimes we'll lose it. So we must understand that it, it's not worth it to lose it. And we must be careful not to lose more to Satan. That what we have, we need to keep. So we treasure God and treasure all the gifts of God. That He gives us the family, gives us the church, give us the ministry, give us the talents, give us the opportunities to serve God. We say, these are all very good. I want to try my best to keep all these blessings of God. Now, if this is an encouragement, if we improve by 1% a day, we can improve much in 100 days. So we keep in encouraging ourselves. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatever t things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So, if there is anything good, meditate on these things. Whether it's something good of other people, or of ourselves, or of God. Any good thing of God, we we'll thank God. Any good things of people, we thank these people, we appreciate these people. And any good thing of ourselves, we say thank God that God has helped me to change, and I'm changing now so I can be happy, so we can encourage myself. And then if I improve by 1% a day, if I improve a little bit, we can say, yes, today I try and then I overcome my sins to a certain extent. I'm improving so I can rejoice in the Lord and I can continue to overcome my sins. 
And so we understand that any improvement is good. Okay, and then uh, so here uh, this is it for the overcoming our sin.